What you say in your marketing really matters. Being able to clearly articulate what you really do, that's what will bring you more clients. Because all the tactics in the world won't save you if your marketing messaging is not resonating and not representing you and your business. So before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to let you know that the waitlist is now open for my next marketing intensive group. This is the exact system that I have used in my one-on-one work with studio owners for over eight years that has helped those business owners to stand out with messaging that really resonates, to create systems that streamlines their marketing efforts, helps them price their offers offerings to help them grow their income without the overwhelm. You come out of this program with a marketing message unique to you and a marketing plan designed specifically for your business goals. Plus, when you join the waitlist, you get access to all sorts of perks, including a special discount and access to an exclusive live workshop all about how to stand out from the crowd and grow your business year after year. All that just for joining the waitlist right now. Sounds good, right? Awesome. So hop on over to spring3.com forward slash marketing intensive and get on that waitlist now, or you can click the link in the show notes. You know how every now and then someone comes into your world and they are just that person who has amazing energy that they brighten up everyone's day. Well, that's Lana. She is a studio owner and teacher on the island of Barbados, where she has a thriving studio business. And that's because she has stayed true to her core values of helping people move and use that to build and grow her business. So listen in and learn about how Lana developed different revenue streams inside her business that has allowed her to both grow her revenue consistently and take a little bit of time off. Well, hi there. I'm Sarah Glanfield. I'm a business and marketing strategist just for boutique fitness studio owners like you. If you're ready to be inspired and make a bigger impact, you're in the right place. All you need are a few key strategies, the right mindset, and some support along the way. Join me as I share the real life insights that will help you grow a sustainable and profitable studio. This is the Pilates Business Podcast. Welcome back to the Pilates Business Podcast. I'm Saran and thank you so much for joining me today. I am thrilled to be joined by studio owner and teacher Lana Seely, who I've had the huge privilege of working with for the last two years inside of my Thrive group coaching program. And I know from hearing back from so many of you that it's really wonderful to hear firsthand from studio owners and teachers um, what they have been working on inside of their studios, how their businesses have evolved and developed and what they're focused on right now. And I brought Lana on today I mean, for so many reasons, first of all, she's an incredible human being, um, but she has a very, a business with many different elements to it. And I wanted to, uh, her to share a little bit about how each of those elements work and why she has decided to add those into her business. So welcome, Lana. I'm so glad you're here. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Great to it's great to have you. So why why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about um, your business, where you're located in the world, um, what you do, how you got you started, um, and how you got to where you are today. Okay, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> so I am located in Barbados, and I have a studio called Body Mechanics, where I work specifically. I shouldn't say specifically, but I do a lot of Pilates movement and some elements of yoga and just movement in general, where I work with people with limitations within their body or people interested in getting further into their body, having come from some form of limitation. And I got there from dancing. You know, I dance professionally. And so you're always surrounded by a lot of injury in the dance world. And we had to focus quite a bit on being responsible for our bodies and and staying away from injury and a big part of that has always been through 
Pilates and yoga and some form of therapeutic movement. Uh, that was always within any curriculum that I would have done in any dance, my dance training. And I really enjoyed it. And it, it helped. It helped quite a bit. So when I started transition out of dance, I just naturally shifted to continue doing the Pilates and the yoga. And it was really interesting. It was really interesting to still be able to use your body without necessarily the wear and tear of dance. And I found there was so much, so much movement to be explored within that realm of not just Pilates, but understanding the anatomy side of it as well. Started out on the anatomy side. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and also the the um detail of Pilates. I think I really started out on the detail of Pilates as well. And and those things, that kind of that combination, I think I fixated on that combination a bit. And then I found that there were quite a few people out there who found that Pilates and yoga was not accessible to them within their body because of limitations, whether it was tight hips or an achy bat or some form of injury they were coming from. But I knew that being able to tap into that type of movement would be helpful. But just there was this block that people did not want to go into it because they figured it was inaccessible to them. So um, I, I thought it was really interesting to tackle that. Not that I was the only person in the world doing it. I'm sure there are many others out there doing it. But that was, that was my curiosity. How, how can I tackle this? To, to translate that language of what was so great about Pilates and yoga and make that accessible to others within their body. You know, so we do a lot. I like to fixate on the modifications and, and, and finding the exercises to get your body moving to a point where it can access that, that language. So that's, right. that's where it all started for me. Yeah. And that's a lot of what you focus on today in all the different ways that you work with your clients, right? So tell us a little bit about how, I mean, tell us a little bit about that. What, how, what are the different platforms and ways that people get to work with Lana? There are few. So <laughs> I, I, do, I do a lot of um, private sessions, in, in-house private sessions where I go to people's homes. And again, these are usually people who have their own machines and want to be specific with um, their movement, whether it is through golf or back pain, it's usually back pain maintenance that most people come, or I, I get most people, um, a lot of it through physio and osteopath. And that then branches out into the private sessions in home or the, what I would call like a private movement clinic in the studio. And then there are the group classes in the studio. Um, and then I have my online platform. <laughs> COVID, there's no... I do a lot of live streaming yeah. and then my on-demand platform with Nama Stream. So yes, yeah. and they're all connected. It sounds like it sounds like a lot, but it's it's all from the same group of that, that same thought process of being able to access movement that would otherwise not be accessible to you because of some form of limitation within your body. And it doesn't always have to be an injury. Sometimes, as I said, sometimes it's just back pain or tight hips or you know you're nervous about a knee injury or you know just not understanding the movement so you know it it has branched out to many different things but it's all started from the same place yeah I love there's so many different ways for people to be able to work with you and I think that you know when you're in in an environment like you're in where there's I'm assuming quite a bit of seasonality um you know, to, to your work, people traveling in, um, visiting perhaps, I guess, maybe second homes and that's, that sort of thing, um, that they're not there year round. Um, that leads obviously to a little bit of unpredictability in your revenue. Right. And, um, that you've done by, ex- by expanding the way that you work with your clients and, you know, utilizing these new platforms, you really have been able to, stabilize your revenue somewhat and be able to give people ways to work with you even when they're not able to visit you live and in in person yes yeah yeah that has been I think that has been the blessing behind COVID because it's always something that I've that I started to work with when I used to travel quite a bit and you wanted to keep your classes going I would always do videos and leave them with clients but they never did them Right. I actually have one client who confessed to me that she would sit there 
on her sofa and watch the video because it felt like we were still connecting. Oh. And I was like, will you just sit and watch me? <laughs> That's not why I did those videos. <laughs> But it was an honest, it was a, it was an honest moment, so I took it. But um, that has been a, a blessing in disguise because I found what would happen with what I would call snowbirds. Um, mm-hmm. Most people who have a second home here in Barbados, they too would go to the physios and osteos because they're working with some form of back injury or usually osteoporosis or scoliosis. So it's something that they have to maintain with a physio of some sort. And the physio would refer to me. So we would do this great work for three to six months. And then I don't see them again. And it felt, and we got so connected that in that space of time where they would travel during the summer, they would do absolutely nothing. So then we started from scratch each year they came back. And it, you know, that was frustrating for me, but also frustrating for them because they weren't keeping their strength up. So I started doing programs at that point so they can, keep going and that was at that point that was just like cue cards pictures of me I would just print it out and have some instructions at the bottom and I would every month I'd have everybody um set in a schedule and every month I would check in to see what exercises you had done and do we need to upgrade anything and which was tricky because I'm not sure if everybody was really truthful about how much <laughs> <I had done. laughs> so now that I have the live stream and now that people are used to using zoom and having meetings by zoom has been really interesting because over the last year all of my snowbirds whether they came to Barbados or not not all of them but a few of them we were able to stay connected by zoom and still have our sessions our private sessions so our private sessions obviously by zoom weren't necessarily on the machines but we were still able to maintain some form of strength or some form of program throughout the year and that really helped them in terms of getting stronger but it also started to teeter out for me in terms of a a steady stream of of income which was was not a thing in the past it was you know it was feast or famine you know I had I had that feast stage of snowbirds are here and then the famine stage of it's summertime even in terms of the locals here you know most people trying to travel so there's there's always a peak time there's always a, a downtime. Um, but the, the most important thing is that I wanted clients to be able to have access to uh, some form of program a year around. And whether that was homework or me writing stuff down or sending them a random picture of myself in a studio, you know, so that has, that's, that's been nice to be able to work on that all year to have, which is why I ended up having so many different avenues of things to do that there's always an option. There's always there's always a way to keep moving, you know? So that, that was the thing to always have a way to keep moving. Yeah. There's always, you're always giving them options, but, and also it's allowed you to, um, to be able to take some time out as well. Right. So go around the holidays. I know you've traveled a little bit, you've taken some time off at various points. Um, and you've had those, um, those different options available for your clients to continue their work with you. So tell us a little bit about how you did that, because I think that was really impressive and super smart way to uh, to take time out, but like still be there. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that was probably been, for me, one of the scariest steps that I, I had to take. And I've been thinking about that and wanting to do that for so long. But for some reason, I felt really guilty. I felt guilty. I felt guilty for a few years. I felt guilty because people were willing to continue going in some cases. And I felt guilty because I was exhausted, but still kept going rather than paying attention to how my body felt. So I was doing the complete opposite of what I was telling people to do. And then you start to feel guilty because usually around the time where you need a break, which is that summer period where you're really, where things are really quiet. As much as I want to take a break, I know that financially I probably can't afford to take a break. And that has usually been a driving force of, well, you can't take a month off because you can't afford to take a month off, you know? And it's unfortunate that I have to, or not that I have to, but I I chose to um, pay more attention to paying bills than I did to how my body felt, you know? So you you feel like a culprit for, for, for doing that. Or I did. I certainly did. And... You know, so I, I was really trying to figure out how can I keep moving and keep eating 
at the same time, <laughs> as well as keep my sanity. So I did, last summer, I did a movement challenge to see who could do the most videos. And then I also did a movement health program for my clients to continue to work on stuff that we had been working on. So we started with a warm up that they were familiar with and some form of cool down that they were familiar with. And then they had, um, what I call like flashcards, which would be just like short 10 or 15 minute videos that they can choose from. And it was interesting to put that together because it was as simple as me planning a class, but I just had to film it. And so it, that thought process of it actually wasn't difficult, you know, and I was thinking, well, I could do this, you know, I could, I could put those cards together, the same way I put those cards together, I can do that in video, but realistically, so if I'm not there, someone might not do a video for an hour, but they might do 20 minutes, so we can do a five minute warm up, we can do a 10 to 15 minute workout, and then we can do a five minute cool down or meditation, so you can choose from what type of warm up you want to do, whether you are warming up for your shoulders or hips or lower back. And then you can do what type of cool down you want to do. If you want to do a stretch for your shoulders or hips, or if you want to do a meditation. And then we'll have your workout, whether we did a core workout, a workout that focused on arms, or a class that focused on legs or lower back. So it was just, I did three videos under each heading. And then I put that in a package on Nama Stream. And their, my clients, their package continued because they had access to these videos. And then I was able to step back and take some time for myself. And it was so crazy because it was, it seemed so simple to put together once I actually did it. But it took me so many years to have the guts to actually do it. And that, that's, that's the only thing, the gusto that it took to do it. Not the time that it took to do the videos, but the guts to say, okay, I'm gonna take two weeks off, but this is your program, this is, you know, and it was an option. It was that our program is going to continue for the next two weeks. And this is your homework. It wasn't, hey, do you want to take two weeks off? It's like, nope, we're continuing. That's your homework. And it it worked. It worked so well. It worked because you were confident in 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 the ability to say to your clients, this is what you're going to do next. And this is what I'm going to do. Um, and you knew what they needed to do, right? You knew you needed to keep them moving. You knew that they needed to keep them engaged. Um, and and you you kind of had that, you had a confidence that you needed to make it happen. Um, and it does take guts because often there's a lot, you know, all of these business decisions that we make, there's a lot of stuff happening up here in our heads that are holding us back, right? And all of these small little decisions, we kind of can sometimes make them, feel bigger than they they actually are because we, there's a lot of things that are are going on and holding us back and a lot of that often has to do with you know concerns about whether something will work whether people will like it and so that when we kind of allow that mentality to sort of feed into our decision making we end up in a place often where we aren't clear with what should happen. We do say to clients, oh, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. Or don't worry too much. It's okay. Like, you know, I'm going on, you, you should take a break too. And I'll check, you know, and, and that's not helpful for them or for you. Right. So what you, you know, the, the fact that you were super clear with them about what they had to do and you gave them very clear instructions is, is, is an element, a huge part, a huge component of why it was so successful yeah. for you and for them. Yeah. Well, that was your idea. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. It wasn't. <laughs> I don't think so. Was it? <laughs> well, you, you I mean you? At that time, I think we were doing. I can't even remember exactly what we were doing, but there was something where we had to get super clear with. I think it was something was super clear with our intentions and what we wanted behind a program, and the intention behind that program was not for everybody to take a break. Obviously, if you say, "Okay, I'm going to give you this option," you're going to take that option of taking a two-week break. But they were all doing so well at that point to take a two week break then just seemed the wrong time for them to take a two week break. But I, I was certainly very close to burnout stage. So I needed that two week break. And it was during the summer. So a lot of people tend to take their break during the summer anyway. So if our break, if my break and your break don't coincide at the same time, 
you don't have to do these two weeks now, but I need you to do them when you take your break. So choose if you're going to do them now or then, but this has to continue. And it stayed within their package and their package had an expiry date. So most people did it. They're not, they don't want to lose two weeks. You know? mm-hmm. So it was just so interesting that it took, it felt like it took me getting so low and so exhausted to have the guts to push through and do it. But once you actually did it, I'm like, is this really what I was fussing over for so long? Well, and the beauty of what you have now is that it's something that you have and can use over and over and over again. And that is really one of the, the most incredible things about putting together a program of any sort um, is that it's the ability to reuse it and rinse and repeat, whether it's a, a six week program or whether it's a, an access to an online program, it's, it's has, it has longevity to it. And that is very, very helpful when you want to scale. Um, but you don't have a lot of other people in your business that can help you to do that. Right. So it's fun. I think you've been so incredibly resourceful. It's and with with the way that you utilize those platforms, and it all has come down to that one real focus of yours, which is you know making the movement accessible in as many you know in, to as many people in as many ways as possible. And you've really stuck to that with the way that you deliver your services, the way that you work with your clients. Um, and so there's really you're not allowing anyone to have any limitations, really. <laughs> Try not to. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier something I wanted to come back to. You mentioned earlier that you get quite a lot of referrals in your business, um, which I'm sure is down to a lot of the, the focus that you, like I just mentioned, the focus that you have in working in the way that you work with your clients. But, you know, presumably that means that you've got some great relationships with um, physical therapists locally and so on. So can you tell us a little bit about how that works and you know what what you do to sort of cultivate those relationships um, with your local, perhaps not even just local um, uh, aligned professions? Yeah, it, it actually is really interesting how it developed because when I first moved back to Barbados, so I was in New York dancing for a few years and then I moved back to Barbados. And at that time, my body, I could feel so much tension in my body and just you know you've been dancing for years and years so there's stuff to work on and that was my goal my goal was to not be broken you know not be a a retired a broken retired dancer you know that I did not want that um and I knew that there were things that needed work and one of those one of the things I said to myself was that I was going to really focus on my body over the next couple of months and over the next couple of years. So what I did was I put in my, every month, it was, I had to do some form of body work. And I found a really good osteopath. I found a really good physiotherapist, a good massage therapist. And then I found someone who does Reiki and acupuncture, because these are all things that we would have had to do in the company. And with, with Merce Cunningham. And, but that was supplied for you. So I then had to do my research to find all these different people. And, in, you know, you're, you're not that I was new to the island, but I had him live here as an adult, you know. So it was like coming back and, and learning things all over again. So just in speaking to different health practitioners, they kind of guided me as to who is the best person and where to go. And I was doing it for myself. So every month within my budget, I would have a massage. And then the next month, okay, what do I need? Acupuncture. And then, you know, I just did that every month because my body needed it. Because I had not major injuries, but there was certainly a lot of stuff going on in the body. Because at that time, I was teaching a lot of dance as well. And sometimes teaching dance can be harder on the body than actually dancing. And that's where my relationship started in taking care of my own body and going to see these people and having conversations with them about what I do and what I was feeling within my body. And those relationships just continue to develop. And I would, some of those relationships developed into us bartering. So everybody wanted some form of core strength or has a back issue or something. So I did a, a lot of bartering and between the bartering and then just, just giving information, I would, I might call up the osteopath or physio and say, hey, I have a client who this is what this is what I see in their body. This is what I've done with them. But I feel like they need another layer. What would you suggest? 
Or is there anything that you can do? And they'd be like, well, yeah, actually send them to me and I'll look after it. And that's how it started, just with asking questions and, and just, I guess, with them seeing me often and then just constantly having that conversation. And then again, just nerding out. I'm going to do this anatomy course. So they were going to do some anatomy course and we would share that information. And it, it literally, it was just that simple. It was, it, it was, there was no intention behind my connections when I first started. It was just what I was working on within my body and then it became what I wanted to share with others within my teaching based off of what I discovered within my own body and it just developed from there um and it's thankfully it's a small island so word gets around um but yeah that's that's how the the connection started and then it ended up being that I would send this person tons of clients and then they would send me back clients and you know it just became this work partnership like that and that that's that's how that started so but the the bartering with different people really did help and again it just kind of turned into that and that is from my photographer my website guy you know everybody you know it just kind of started like that and and developed into something wonderful yeah that's great that's really great so um in terms of your uh, being a business owner, now you've been a business owner for how many years? Eleven. Eleven years. Eleven years. All right. It's been a. It's, you've, there's a lot of you know you've evolved and grown in so many different ways. So, um, where do you kind of want to focus your attention next? What are your kind of big sort of focus areas for the next twelve months or so? You know, being where you're at right now, you've developed these amazing um, different service like delivery methods right how you work with your clients the different platforms you've got your clients to a place where they understand that to work with you they're going to be doing some of these things using these different platforms um so how, where does where do you go from here with your business and what you're going to be doing um i would like to clean everything up clean everything up in a sense that it feels like i still have things jot down on pieces of paper and that's what i'm working with and i would just like to just clean everything up and, and really and truly hone it into a full package that you you go onto the website and you can see clearly what those packages are. Whereas right now, I think only these stronger packages that have been there around for a bit longer, maybe there. Um, and I would like to start teaching it. I would like to start um, putting together my information and teaching that because I see so many other instructors out there who would always call to find out how to do certain things. Um, and then I don't have any other instructors at any moment. So there are, and there are only so many hours in a day. So right now I'm teaching some days six classes or seven or eight classes back to back. And that's not practical to do six days a week. You know, um, I'm a big girl now. I'm only doing six days a week, not seven. But that's what I would like to do. I would like to start to really hone in and, and make sense of that information and document that information so I can share it uh, in a, some form of teacher training or mentorship program or so that's that's the 12 month goal right now the most importantly stay sane while I'm doing it that's right stay yeah. sane yeah yes <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I have had such a fantastic time chatting with you today. It's been great to hear a little bit more about all of the ins and outs of what you're working on and where you're going. And obviously I get to see you every single week inside of Thrive. So I'm really fortunate, but I know that everyone's going to love hearing and learning more about you on this episode. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about where people can find you online? Are you on Instagram, website, that sort of thing? Yeah, well, I'm on Instagram, um, body mechanics. So it's body underscore mechanics. And mechanics is spelled very funky. It's spelled M E K A N I X. And I'm going to link to it in the show notes. It's all yeah. good. The website as well, bodymechanics.com, and everything is bodymechanics. Lana, bodymechanics.com. Yeah. Perfect. It's there, yeah. So if anybody ever is, is heading to Barbados anytime soon, you guys should all go and check out Body Mechanics Studio and get connected with Lana. Um, we don't enjoy. even have Pilates. We could just go to the beach. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome too. I'd like to do both. I'd like to do both. You should do both. <laughs>
Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Lana. I really appreciate it. It's so great to chat with you. So great to see you with you always. Thank you. Thank you for your amazing insight and help in putting all this together. You're so welcome. Did you love this episode and want more? Head to spring3.com and check out my free resources that will help you run a profitable and fulfilling studio business. And before you go, one last reminder, there is no one way to do what you do, only your way. So whatever it is that you want to do, create or offer, you've got this. Thanks again for joining me today and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.